Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dear students, welcome to the course of organic farming. Over the last several lectures on organic farming, now we have get an idea of what is organic farming, what is the different type of principles and what is its components. If we want to grow a certain crop for organic, what about the different type of organic nutrients and how you can go for organically weed management, insect pest management and the others. Also we have get a glimpse how in case of world as well as our India organic product is being exported and whatever their growth and if we have seen throughout the world there is a very much nowadays growth of organic product is very high. The consumer awareness is too high, people want very good quality nutritive and pesticide residue free food and for that they also want to pay premium price for this organic produce. If we should in case of our organic farming for India. Always organic farming also promoted by our present government for particularly for niche area and niche crops. If we take the niche area, the area where farmers are already applying very low amount of fertilizer or farmers are using very rarely using any insecticide or pesticides, probably the hilly states of northeastern region of India, the organic farming is promoted mostly as compared to the other area. Similarly, in case of other areas or other states where it will be tough for converting the whole area into organic, but there is always a demand to go for organic especially for the horticultural crops because this most of the horticultural crops includes the fruits, vegetables, flowers and they have a very high market demand. Their market price is very high and a consumer always ready to pay some extra money to give this good quality organic vegetables and fruits. So, in this presentation I will just you glimpse a idea about how we can grow for organic for different type of horticultural crops and how different the systems of organic farming can be simultaneously managed within the farm and I have also given some examples of some important horticultural crops how we grow for organic farming. So, if we see our organic farming it promotes and enhance agro ecosystem health including the quality and healthy food. It avoids the use of synthetically produced fertilizer, pesticide, growth regulators and livestock feed additives. The principle of success of agriculture maintaining a living soil. Our main emphasis in the organic farming not to give food directly to the plant, but to give the nutrient to the soil. And we should make the soil such a healthy quality and fertile so that it can provide all the major and micronutrients whatever is needed for the plant growth. And most of the cases in fruits and vegetables under organic farming we have seen these crops yield potential is very high 20 ton 30 ton per hectare. So, whenever the yield potential is very high of these crops, so their nutrition demand will be very high. Oh, that is why we have to take lot of organic nutrient management options for supplying the manure or supplying the organic nutrients to these horticultural crops especially fruits and vegetables and diversified farming with focus on integrated farming system. Not only single one crop basis only tomato, tomato or potato, potato not like that. We all also try to promote the crop diversification. So, that different type of crop we can grow in a particular area and apart from the crop we can also include horticultural crops, we can include fishery, livestock, piggery, cattle, poultry within the same farm. So, that we can produce enough amount of manure which we can use for the horticultural crops. And if you see the what is the organic farming, we cannot use any agrochemicals, we cannot use any GMO that is genetically modified crops, no synthetic fertilizer, mostly we have to rely on the organic fertilizer. So, different type of organic fertilizer source is there, we have to use, we can use for crop rotation. So, if this year I am growing some vegetable for this vegetable very much important the crop rotation. If you grow solanaceous crop like tomato, brinjal every year in the same field. So, there is a lots of problem of insect pest and diseases in the subsequent years just like the bacterial yield 
and it will be very tough to control under organic management condition. So, that is why in our organic farm or organic kitchen garden, we always try to promote crop rotation. rotation. If you go this type tomato, the next time you should not grow tomato, you should grow some other type of crops not from the solanaceous family. And second is the crop diversification. We always promote different type of vegetables and fruits, maybe 20, 30 or more within a small farm, so that farmers will get sufficient income throughout the year, not a particular time or period. Only suppose he is going cauliflower 5000 for organic farming. So, most of this cauliflower will come for a particular time for the marketing and probably he will not get enough market price. So, there will be market glut. So, in that condition, we always also try to promote staggered planting. Staggered planting means if you are want to grow 1000 cauliflower, 200 you transplant today, after 10 days you transplant again 200, after again 10 days you can go for 200, so that all of the produce will not come their maturity stage at a same time. Because in case of cereal, rice, wheat, millet, we can store their grains very easily and there is no need of any our refrigerator system or any cold chamber or other things or cold storage. But this type of vegetable, if we cannot store in a cold chain system, they will not stay for one or two days. Sometimes maybe for potato will be okay, but since for tomato and other, their res period, stable, residual period is very low. So, always we have to try to promote this type of tagard planting. Also, they are also help to reduce soil erosion and also the increase soil organic matter. Whenever the soil organic matter or soil carbon will be enhancement, so definitely they will hold the nutrients, they will help the soil moisture and aggregate stability will be more, erosion will be less. Similarly, we are also promoting use of different type of local resources. Every time you have not to make every time of compost or vermicompost, you cannot purchase from the market. So, you have the local resources, maybe your wheat straw, rice straw, vegetable waste, your jungle biomass, weed biomass, all you can use after the composting method. So, if you see whatever the strategies to enhance the productivity and productivity, first is the soil management, use of organic manure, plant protection, you have to do the seed treatment, because seed treatment is very much necessary if we wanted to see, because until the crop will come in the field and there is too much attack of insect, pest and diseases, at that time it will be very tough to control. So, in organic farming when we cannot use insecticide or pesticide, we should always promote go for the seed treatment and seed treatment with different type of microorganisms, maybe trichoderma or other plants. We have to always use the resistant varieties, because whatever we are growing these fruits or vegetables, their yield is very high and they also too much susceptible to insect pest. So, if there is too much insect and pest load and we cannot control with using the neem oil and some other organic sources in organic farming, there will be too much yield penalty. So, always we have to try that type of variety which are little bit resistant or tolerant to insect pest and diseases. Suppose there are different type of things is there, some the, in case of ginger there is too much problem of soft rot. So, there may be some variety which are helping, so there will be less chance of soft rot. So, in organic farming we have to always promote that type of insect pest and disease tolerant varieties. Also, we have net the value addition. Value addition is very much necessary whenever we go for organically produce horticultural crops. A simply 1 kilo tomato a farmer is getting only 20 rupees, 10 rupees, sometimes he has to sell only 5 rupees per market. But if there is a value addition, the same only 50 gram potato is fetching 10 rupees in case of lays whenever you are marketing as a potato chips. Similarly, you cannot store your turmeric because turmeric storability probably you have not the capacity and cold storage system, but a farmers or a entrepreneurs make the powder by drying the turmeric makes the turmeric powder, then it, it can be easily stored for 6 months, 1 year or more and after the organic certification and proper labeling, he can sell this produce not only in India and outside India in a very higher premium price. So, post harvest processing and value addition. This should be have a tremendous potential to enhance our export in case of our horticultural crops. Also, there is a need of quality planting materials, seeds, maybe saplings that should be virus or disease free, that should be good in quality. So, this is the some strategies how we to enhance the productivity and pro our quality of the organically produced, especially for horticultural crops, maybe flowers, fruits and vegetables. What is the major challenges of agriculture? We are promoting try to organic agriculture, but the area cultivation and expansion, there are some constraint. What is the constraint? The availability of huge quantity of organic input. If we see for case of tomato, there is a need of recommended dose for going organically up to 20 ton per hectare AOL decomposed FOM. 
but a farmer probably may not have so much of a foam in his farm and if he want to purchase from the outside of the market he is not assured of the quality whether they are organic or not and there will be too much cost but in that condition if always we try to promote to farmers to go in an integrated farming system approach so that he can also maintain some livestock and he can produce the cow dung within his own farm and with the help of other crop residue and other weed biomass maybe arthoam he can contribute to production of good quality compost and farm compost then this problem will be solved similarly animal based crita is not sufficient we have to also sometime use different type of biofertilizer maybe azotobacter azosporilum rhizobium phosphorus solubilizing bacteria and phosphorus mobilizing microorganisms so we have to promote also the biofertilizer we can use different type of concentrated organic materials like neem oil cake mustard cake sesame cake groundnut cake so it is always necessary to utilize all the resources available either on the farm or off the farm so what is the different type of resource components that is available for organic farming when we are go for certification or production of some horticultural crop the most important is the farm yard manure crop residue is there after rice taking or wheat that straw or stover is spreading there are lot of weed biomass in your field you can use after composting green manure with the different type of sesbania and other crops bio fertilizer i have already discussed compost farm compost with the health of arthoam sicenia foedida and utilis eugeni you can also different type of oil cakes these are concentrated organic and their nitrogen content is very high so these are not bulky in nature and they are not very tough to transportation so but their cost will be little bit high mulching always we are advocating in different type not only it enhancing the soil moisture but also enhancing the soil fertility and soil condition liquid manures there are different types of panchagobba sasagobba bijamrit jivamrit now it is available there are lots of indigenous technical knowledge is available and apart the blending with the scientific process we can use for complementing or enhancing our yield similarly there are different type of botanical rock phosphate rock phosphate is we can uh, it is allowed to use in the organic farming at it does not go any chemical process and we know the purulia rock phosphate musori rock phosphate there is a good amount of reserve is there and especially they are very much recommended for using the acidic soil where phosphorus is being fixed with the iron and aluminum phosphate similarly we can grow different type of leguminous crops in between bond or la cropping and we can use this leaf as a nutrient and also the, the conservation tillage we are also from suppose you want to grow different type of one vegetable of pea after the rice fellow if there is plow the soil there will be moisture will be gone if there is too much moisture again we can go for the plowing but after the rice harvesting if we want to grow a simply line sowing with the help of zero till machine we can grow pea so that will conserve the soil moisture and that soil moisture will help him to grow the crop pea with the residual moisture without giving any artificial irrigation in rice fellow similarly there are different certified commercial product is needed legume is very much needed i have already told because they have the capacity to nitrogen fixation and in case of horticultural crops they are very nutrient exhaustive crop they take lots of nutrient from the soil and this leguminous crop they not only fix the nitrogen in the soil but also they take the nutrient from the deeper layer and upon their residue when we are incorporated back into the soil the deeper layer soil whatever the nutrients is they are coming to the surface layer so by this there will be nutrient mobilization within the field and we can grow for organic farming we have also told different type of crop rotation and intercropping we can interpol different type of cross along with the vegetables for their production enhancement now already i have told what are the such an areas where we are promoting the growth of the organic farming maybe northeastern region of patia in the hills of uttarakhand himachal pradesh and southern other part where the soil organic carbon is very good climate is moderate and farmers are already using fertilizer in a very less quantity similarly in other areas where probably temperature is not very moderate or farmers are not using very less amount they amount a good amount of insecticide pesticide and other things but there is too much demand for some organic produce in the market either in the domestic market and either in the international market for sure what crop we should go in that condition we should always go for organic farming for the high value crops where there is market demand is too high and crop and market produces otherwise if you are growing some crops and in the market rate is only 5 to 6 rupees in kilo it will not be profitable so in this lecture i will also give whatever the different type of niche crops mainly the horticulture produce is common to the niche crops where we should go for organic one picture has been given you is the ginger if you say india produce a very good quality quantity of ginger over the world 
but our international trade market is very low. While China is not producing as compared to the India, but most of the world's organic mar market has been taken by them. So, in the most parts of the Northeast India, where we are producing very good quality of ginger, but this ginger is not being certified. And farmers are already using very less amount of fertilizer or other things. So, there is a chance to convert this area under the organic certification and we can sell these our organic produce outside India for export purpose and we can earn a very good amount of foreign exchange. Similarly, if you the dragon fruit, everywhere you and go to some big bazaar or some other stores, the dragon fruit you will see. They are 300, 400 rupees per kilo and people are also ready to keep more than 500 rupees for organic type of this crop. So, this type of crops always we are promoting under the organic farming, this high quality vegetables and also uh, fruits. Similarly, if you see, we have done some experiment over the year and want to know, there are different type of organic manure for growing any horticultural crops. Suppose we are growing vegetable, so what are the different source of organic manure? It is maybe FOIM, it is maybe vermicompost. Otherwise, we can also do 75 percent of the nutrient we can apply through the FOIM and 25 percent apply, apply through the vermicompost. And if you see, in most of the cases, our yield of the vegetable is higher in case of either FOIM or VC. Also, if you see for the potato, this FOIM and VC are at par and in case of French bean, you see highest is under the FOIM plus VC. Why in case of French bean, FOIM plus VC is the highest? Because this Bharmi compost, they also help little bit provide some growth stimulator oxygen gibberellin. So, they also give the growth. So, by this different type of a farmers have to choose which type of vegetable he want to grow and how much Bharmi compost he can generate within his own farm. He cannot purchase from the market, then it will not be cost effective. So, if he have sufficient amount of Bharmi compost, we are always recommending to replace 25 percent of the nutrient nitrogen recommended apply through the Bharmi compost and raise 75 percent through the FOM. If you see, everyone we know the quality. Nowadays, we also want pesticide residue field and in case of organic farming, the produce is the all right of the superior quality. And one experiment we have seen for the different type of quality parameters of the tomato. And if you see, our organic nutrient sources, all our TSS, total soluble solid, ascorbic acid, beta carotene, total carotene is significantly higher as compared to the inorganic. So, whenever we are going from inorganic to organic, this quality all these are being enhancement. So, we can tell organically produced crop are better in nutritive value. Why raised and sunken bed? In some parts of India, there is too much water even after the rainfall season in the marshy land or valley land condition. The water is coming seepage from the hills. So, in that condition, farmers cannot grow any crop. In certain parts, farmers are going boon method of agriculture, where they are growing the vegetable and after going the vegetable, they are aching, baking the field and going for the rice. So, in that condition, every time you have to make the barn and break it. So, lots of cost is involved and so labor is needed. In that condition, we have developed some permanent raised and sunken bed system. You can see the whatever the soil is there, the soil has been cut and put in the above line. So, this is called the raised bed and this is the sunken bed. In the sunken bed, we are growing only rice because you know, rice is very much needed for our staple for our food, but that is not giving enough price. But if we grow different type of crops, maybe tomato, French bean, maybe carrot, cabbage, cauliflower, we can grow. Similarly, you can also see a very beautiful picture how we are growing rice plus okra that is bhindi or ladies fingers in this organic farm. So, we can grow rice here and in the rankin bed in the kharif season we can grow for okra. After okra we can also grow for different type of other vegetable like cabbage, cauliflower. So, by this method we are enhancing the total yield and also the income of the farmer. And if you see there is no need of giving water because water is already there in the sunken area. So, root can directly get it. So, these also work as a micro catchment area and in situ moisture conservation is happening. We have also done different type of soil bug density, soil organic carbon and SMBC. SMBC means soil microbial biomass carbon, how they are influenced by the varying cropping system. If you see whenever we grow any vegetable, all the vegetables may not be same. If you case the SMBC, the concentration is significantly higher in case of rice plus French bean as compared to the rice and potato. So, it may be better for the SMBC condition. Similarly, when you source the nutrient condition, if you see our bug density is very much less in case of 100 percent organic. And other khetra you see the soil organic carbon, 
this is very important soil organic carbon play a major role for soil aggregation, soil physical structure, soil chemical and also the soil biological and our 100 percent organic carbon and also the integrated and 75 percent is better as compared to the our inorganic, inorganic soil organic carbon is very low. Similarly, SMBC is also enhanced whenever we go for inorganic to organic. So, we have to always take care of these things, how we can manage different type of this type of organic sources and they are this organic farming that is why always we told to grow for the farmers not only for their better yield, not only for their better profit, but also due to the enhancements of the soil quality. Unless your soil will not be good, unless you can maintain your soil health, you cannot grow for vegetable production year after year in the next same soil. Because this horticultural crop, their yield is very high and they take lot of nutrient from the soil. So, previously whenever going for inorganic farming only, myconutrient deficiency is coming because previously we are using different type of organic manure and this organic manures have lost of myconutrient content, iron, manganese, zinc, copper, boron, molybdenum. But nowadays we are gripping only fertilizer in case of intensive agriculture, we are only applying nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium and we are not giving any crop manure, crop residue and other things. So, every year when you are growing horticultural crops, all the micronutrients is taken by the plant and over the years micronutrient deficiency is coming. Nowadays, sulphur deficiency, zinc deficiency, boron, molybdenum deficiency is very common and organic manure has the capability to supply all these micronutrients so that our quality will be good, our produce will be good and soil will be very much healthy. We are also promoting different type of integrated organic farming system. We cannot grow only one crop under organic farming without thinking from where my organic manure will come, from where my vermicompost will come. We are growing suppose on case of brinjal in under organic, uh, there may be too much attack of brinjal fruit and shoot borer, so all my crop has gone. Farmer sometimes doing this type of only one crop may even go for the suicide. So, in that condition we always try to promote different type of crops in your farm. It is our simply one kitchen garden area, we are growing lots of vegetable in organic. Similarly, we are also integrating with cattle. If you see, this is the cattle and all the cattle washing is directly coming to the pond. So, we are not giving any feed to the fish. Fish is getting fair food by the production of zooplankton and phytoplankton and this water is very much necessary for irrigation all the crops. And if you see whatever the e extra cow dung is there along with the maize straw and other straw, we are using very good quality vermicompost. So, we have not to depend on the market. One output or byproduct of one enterprising are used as a input for the others. So, our dependence for the external inputs for the market will be reduced. A farmer is getting throughout year income, the farmers is getting and also very much need of balanced diet. From this integrated organic farming system, he is getting cereal, pulses, oil seed, fruit, vegetable, milk and also he is getting fish. So, always this type of also help for a balanced nutrition food and nutritional security apart from also enhancing is the living standards. This is the organic kitchen garden in the picture, I have just given one picture, how the different type of grows, maybe chili, maybe our brinjal, okra, laipatta and also we are growing cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, lettuce, coriander. So, a farmers can get most of his daily income from a kitchen garden. If you go our previously our village side, every small household has a small kitchen garden and he is uses, he or she is want to produce different type of organically produce. Most of they are organic where people use very less amount of fertilizer, but over the years this tendency has been gone. We have very much reluctant to grow this type of vegetables, but if we see in the last one year or two year where the COVID situation has been high, when people there is a transportation movement and transportation restriction, we cannot grow anywhere to purchase and farmers cannot able to sell their produce in the market, everyone nowadays also want to do sometimes of organic garden. Even in the cities people want to grow different type of vegetables in the balcony also in the roof and they are always try to promote in this small area. So, organic kitchen garden development. So, if you see the economics, we have just very small area of organic kitchen garden only 0 0.1 hectare per area. So, if you see we grow different type of vegetables throughout the year and if you see we are do very much nutrient cycling that is washing, FOIM, vermicompost and you see how much total return we are getting we are getting more than 19,000. From 1 hectare, 19,000 is not a very less amount. It ultimately leads to 1,91,000 hectare per year. And if you see, this is the income. Beside, he also good, good quality 
food and nutritional security of for his family throughout the year. He have not to go for work from the outside. He will be busy to managing his farm throughout the year. So, income will be also come throughout the year, he will get some amount of money. So, this type of small, small organic kitchen garden always should be promoted. It is not visible every for farmers who go for commercial cultivation of organic agriculture 1 hectare, 2 hectare area. So, our small and marginal farmer, we should always promote to go for organic. So, whatever he will get good quality feed and whatever the extra produce is there, after the certification he can sell in the organic market. Similarly, you can see this is the ginger. The scientific name of the ginger is gingiver officinal. It is very important crop and spice crop. And if you see our southern states and the northeastern states are mostly producing the ginger. But our quality of the ginger production in the northeastern region of part India is very good. And if you see it is mostly gazer and food court, it can show from the April to March to in the region. We have different type of seed rate requirement 8 to 20 quintal per hectare. Yield is also very high 8 to 20 ton. So, when yield is very high, it means they also take too much nutrient from the soil. And this will be always challenge for us how to supply a sufficient quantity of nutrient in case of ginger, in case of turmeric. And that is why we always try to promote for crop rotation. If you grow ginger over the years, 3 years, 4 years, not only the enhancement of different disease like ginger soft rot increase, but also the yield will be reduced because the soil fertility will declining. But if we can rotate this year, I can grow ginger. Second year, definitely I go for soybean or groundnut or cowpea. So, in the second year, soil fertility again restored. So, again in the third year, he can grow for the cultivation of the ginger. So, this type of crop rotation always should be promoted, particularly when you go for organic farming and we cannot apply fertilizer in the field. This is the method of planting. Furrows of 4 to 5 centimeter into 30 to 25 centimeter. Seed treatment is very much necessary, I have already told. Because we every time we cannot apply insecticide in organic farming. So, if our seed is good, we can control lots of diseases. And that is why seed treatment is recommended with two things that is Pseudomonas fluorescens 1 bacteria and second is the Trichoderma viridi. The seed rate would be is 4 gram per 1 kilo. So, whenever we do this type of seed treatment, the chances of contamination of our seed will be less. And whenever in the soil, there may be different type of germs already present in the soil, but whenever they will come to attack the seed or the plant, these microorganisms will help to defend the crop and they will fight with the organisms. So, for this generally I have already told ginger is a very high nutrient adjustive crop, yield is very high. So, they need FOM 20 metric ton per hectare. We are also applying rock phosphate because most of the acidic soil are phosphorus deficient. So, we should apply some amount of rock phosphate which is organically allowed. Always they are in need of liming. We cannot apply 4 ton or 5 ton a hectare per liming as a blanket recommendation. That is why we are promoting to use grow liming in far over 400 kilo per hectare. So, they immediately increase the soil pH. When the soil pH is increased, most of the nutrients become available so that plant can take. Similarly, we are also using the neem cake. Not only neem cake will provide different type of nutrients, but they have some anti-insecticidal properties. So, insect will not attack in the roots. There are a lot of diseases also occurred like damping up and other lots of cutworm and other worm also they are present within the soil which attack these vegetable crops and neem cake will help due to their insecticidal properties. We have also different type of mulching is needed. So, there should be soil moisture reserve in the field. This is the ginger crop and there are a lot of area because this type of crops always is a species crop and too much space is present in case of ginger. So, if we always try to give some type of mulches, maybe weed biomass, rice straw and some other organic mulches, it is not only enhancing the soil fertility, but it also help as a soil conditioner. Different mulching materials we can use for ginger. Paddy straw we can use, we can use dry leaves, we can dry grasses, also arthicum and weeding, but in case of weeding also we cannot use any herbicide. We have to always follow the different type of protocol under organic farming. So, we can go for crop rotation, intercropping and some other mulching. This is the only technique we can use for organic farming apart from the hand weeding. But always hand weeding is very much costly because too much labor is needed. So, we have to take care of also other like mulching, intercropping and other weed control management practices whenever we grow organically this type of spice crop especially ginger or turmeric. I have already told there are different types of varieties or the germplasm which is play very important role. And every time we have to choose the germplasm not only on their yield as well as the quality of the value, but also we have to take which of the germplasm are little bit resistant to insect pest and diseases. And this is the varieties like Suprabha, 
Nadia, Mahima, Jamia Nagar. So, this Nadia is a very well popular variety of the ginger. So, only this type of variety we should promote it under case of organic farming. This is the different type of, I have already told the seed treatment is very much important. And how to do the seed treatment? One is the, if you see that is called Bijam Marit. This is has been derived from our indigenous knowledge and over, uh, there is lots of science behind it. This has been generated for our indigenous desi cow, if you see mix of 5 kilo cow dung, 5 liter of cow urine and 1 liter of cow milk with 250 gram lipe in 100 liter of water. So, after the mixing, keep the solution for one night, soak the seed rhizome in the solution for 30 minutes a farmer is doing the soaking and after the dry in the shed, we should go for the planting. So, this is one type of seed treatment which is our very liquid manure because we cannot go for any inorganic pesticides for the seed treatment. Similarly, rhizome solarization will be there, we can increase the under the polythin seed we can keep and give some temperature. So, there will be little bit hardiness will come in the rhizomes. Similarly, we can go also for the hot water treatment 51 d degree for 10 minutes because in organic when we cannot apply different type of insecticide or pesticide, we have to give too much emphasis on this different types of water treatment, maybe the seed treatment is very important. And if you see how we will stress the phase ginger, this is always process, every farmer has not the capacity in cold storage or may not be immediately sell in the market. So, first rhizome washing and cleaning, then you can make a sand layer in your field, in your pit. After the you can give different type of spreading rhizome 5 to 6 kg per meter square. Again the crowbarring rhizome with again sand layer. So, one layer your rhizome is there, again there will be sand, again there will be ginger rhizome will be there, there will be sand and after that up to the top layer we can store this type of ginger in our own condition. So, we have not to purchase any additional facility beans and other things. Preservation is also very much needed. If you cannot use the ginger on the same day you can make slices and you can make different type of preservatives. Without also using the preservatives in organic, we can store ginger. Mainly, we can be preserve some citric acid. Similarly, storage of seed rhizome. This year, I have already told for rhizome, we are getting 15 to 20 ton per hectare yield. The seed rate is also very high, 15 to 20 quintal. And we cannot purchase very huge amount of seed from the market with a very high rate. So, all I have to have to conserve the seed and that is we have always conserved the seed. In the seed we can also different type of neem leaves or some indigenous leaves which have a capacity to repel the insect and all you have seen now there is another second crop is turmeric. Turmeric is also very important spice crop every day we are using and there are lots of medicinal and other value. And if you see whenever we grow for turmeric also just like ginger we should promote the legume in the crop rotation and also we should the intercropping. If you see one line we are growing the turmeric and it is growing the soybean. Again two lines or one line may be turmeric again soybean. So, by this process of intercropping we can enhance the soil fertility and some of the nutrients is directly coming to the turmeric. So, they are reducing their total nutrient demand. This is the different types of turmeric germplasm which are available. This is for ICR research complex mega turmeric 1. Narendra Turmeric 1, Kedarnath, Pratibha and there is some other lines. There also may be different type of lines when you are do. So, there is also need to how the seed storage because here also our seed rate is very high for turmeric. It is 15 to 20 quintal per hectare. So, dig pit of 1 meter into 1 meter size, plaster we can do the plaster baby cement or mud and other things and place the rhizome in pit layer by layer putting leaves in between and after that we can cover with grass or wooden plate. So, this is some traditional or indigenous capacity by which we can store our seed rhizome especially ginger and turmeric for growing in the next crop. And if you see mulching is very much important because these are very specious crop lot of space is there in between two crops. So, what we are doing here in between do we can grow different type of mulch, it may be rice straw mulch, it may be wheat straw mulch, you can also apply different type of leguminous crop as a living mulch. So, if you see this is the mulching materials, you can go also the rice straw mulching generally we are using 10 ton paddy per hectare and the second time if because it is a long duration crop. So, one type of rice straw it is may be decomposed. So, after 3 or 4 months you can also maybe give the second type of mulching. This is a different type of disease is also occurring in case of our turmeric one is the leaf spot and if we see what is the management of insect pest and diseases because we cannot apply any chemical insecticide. 
So, for which we have to we have to depend on the different type of biological source, botanical, biopesticide, cultural lens, others. So, if you see in case of cultural methods, always we are trying to promote resistant varieties, also recommended spacing, clean cultivation is very much needed, seed treatment is very much needed, also mechanical methods. Sometimes we can in, tell the insect by your hand, you have to order a vigil to your feed. So, that whenever you can notice some type of insect pest or disease, you have to take care. Because at the later stage, when the insect or disease spread through our field, organically control will be very tough. Similarly, there are lots of botanical nowadays available, previously which is not available in the market. That is why you can go organic for this value, high value, this type of spice crop like ginger and turmeric. That is the neem extract, azadirectin is there, garlic extract is there. Also, we can use different type of legume root or artificial extract and ginger, garlic, chili extracts. So, they have some role for defending the plant from different type of insect pest and diseases. Biopesticide, I have told when we are using some biological organisms in our system to control, but there should be always host specificity. It should, we should attack only the targeted species, it should not attack our beneficial insect. And if you see Bacillus thuringiensis is there, nuclear polyhedrosis virus and also there is other things, Buvaria, Metargeim. And these all are recommended to use in the organic farming. Not only for this crop, these are all, they have a wider host. So, they can also use for like in maize, like fall army worm and other crops. Similarly, we can also grow different type of our trap plant and other plants. So, whenever we are taking this type of cultural, biological, mechanical and also biopesticide, we can control different type of insect pest for this high value crops even under the organic farming. There is also different type of naturalism enemies there. The natural enemy, there are some predators which are already present in the soil so, or in the atmosphere, assassin bugs, brown lacing, lady beetle, minute spirit bugs. So, always we have to promote this type of insect, beneficial insect or organisms in our field. Generally, when we apply in inorganic fertilizer, every type too much pesticide, they are not only kill our harmful insect, but they also kill our natural enemies. But in organic farming, these natural enemies always are being promoted. So, they can take care of the harmful insects or pathogens by their own. Definitely, there are also non-conventional pesticides is there. And if we see, one of the major important disease post of ginger is the soft rot. A major loss has been died for this disease. But whenever we see, in case of ginger, soft rot, it is mostly because farmers are using bad quality their rhizomes they are not properly inoculating or seed treatment and also farmers is growing ginger in the same crop year after year. So, the it is enhanced and if you see rotting spreads to the rhizome resulting in soft rot and the roots arising from the infected rhizome also undergo decay. So, it will be very, very less and quality will be also. So, how to control this soft rot? If you see this is the soft rot of the ginger, how it is being destroyed and the plant is become yellowish and you can easily pull out from the soil. So, your yield will be total will be very much less, this is the healthy plant and this is the of the soft rot attack ginger plots. So, how to manage? We have to use always the disease free planting materials, avoid water stagnation in the field, raised barren proper days, seed rhizome that I already told fusarium species is there. So, we have to take the hot water treatment at 50 degree 1 degree centigrade for 51 minute. Similarly, neem cake, if neem cake also little bit costly, but if we can use up to 2 ton per hectare, we can control this disease at 2 very much. Also, we have to we can treat with the rise of trichoderma, soil application of trichoderma is advocated. We can also use the restricted use borodix mixture sometime is allowed to use in the organic farming. So, crop rotation, this is very important crop like maize and paddy. If you are only growing ginger, 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 then probably ginger soft rot will be more. You can inter, you can just crop rotation with maize and paddy. You can also crop rotation with different type of legumes like soybean, cowpea and groundnut. So, we have to also make produce from the turmeric. We cannot store the turmeric. We cannot sell the immediately to the market. So, what we can do? We can do different type of products from the turmeric. One of the most important thing is turmeric powder, which is a very high value and if you see, we have to dry it powder to a mess. We can also use different type of turmeric oil and their rhizome content also oleuracin. They also major important part is the curcumin and this curcumin has a very important role and curcumin has a very high much of health effect. If you see when we are growing certain types of lacadum in the Meghalaya, there is the highest curcumin content in the world more than 7 percent. 
but in case of the same in the different other rhizome there is always the curcumin content is very less 3 to 3.5 percent and there is a lot of demand in the not only in the domestic market in India outside of the India for this higher curcumin content powder. So, in organic farming we should try to grow this type of varieties where the curcumin content is very high under the organic management practices. So, that when we get the certification and after the proper value addition or the processing when we, we with the beautiful packing and certification tag we can sell this organic turmeric powder to outside of India at a very high price and farmers will get enough remunerative. So, processing generally turmeric generally sometime you can simply dry it by cutting, but always it is advocate to go for the boiling. So, that the maximum curcumin content will be conserved and maximum recovery of the powder will be there. If you see this is the only single you can put all the rhizomes here and after that the boiling, but you should not do for over boiling because it will spoil the color of the final product. Similarly, under boiling dried program became brittle. So, after that when the boiling has been done, what is the next process? There is dried and grinding. You have to simply lots of your cementum stone or otherwise in the plastic you should use this for, for the drying of the purpose and it takes generally 15 to 20 days for drying. So, lots of sunlight is needed. If you have not any artificial dryer you have to use sun for 15 to 20 days and if you see after that the moisture may be reduced only 18 to 20 percent the yield of dried may be 20 percent. It is mean suppose in case of 100 kilo only we are getting 100 kilo of the turmeric is there, but after the in the last condition when you go for turmeric after we go for grinding it may only 20 percent. It is mean 80 percent was the water. So, this water should be grow in the process of the drying. Then only ultimately we should provide in the grinder machine and we can get very good quality turmeric powder. Now, the next stop is simply packing certification packaging should be given there and after that we can sell the in the market. And if you see this is the products, even if you go for the different type of e-commerce sites, you go for Amazon and you can look for this organic turmeric. There are lots of entrepreneurs now are doing these activities and they are selling a very good price. Only one turmeric kilo probably in the market you will get 200, 300 rupees kilo, but this organically high curcumin content turmeric, they are fetching more than 1000 rupees per kilo. So, there is enough chance to enhance the profitability of a farmers by doing this organic farming certification and very good quality value at post harvesting, processing, grinding and ultimately packaging and selling. So, also we can produce different type of turmeric oil and other things. Now, what is the pineapple? We have generally discussed with the two spice crops. Now, one fruit crops, I am also taking on the horticulture or organic management practices. It is one of the most commercially grown food crops in the NEH region. And if you see its flavor and executive taste, it is one of the best in India. Tripura pineapple, not only best in India, it is one of the best in the world because they are sweetness and very less fiber. So, these type of crops which has a very high demand in the market, not only in the domestic market, but also the international market, we should promote organic farming. But if you see most of the northeastern part of India, especially for the Arunachal Pradesh, Meghalaya, farmers are doing pineapple in very slopey land, but the scientific organic package of practices is missing. So, we have to develop some package of practices and demonstrate and also it have to be disseminated to the farmer so that they can get very good quality, they can also get the certification tag and get better price. So, there are two varieties if you see, generally they are planting with suckers and slips. So, always we have to take care of which type of planting materials I have to grow and because every time if you grow for suckers or slip, whenever the maturity period differs. So, always we try to make in our farm in such a way, so that most of the pineapples are not matured at a particular only one time. There, there should be maturity over the 6 months, 7 month periods. Then only farmer can harvest little, little from his cell. Otherwise, if all the production is come to the market and all the has ripened in one month, then probably he will not get price. There will be also problem for him to sell in the market. So, planting time always staggered planting time for this pineapple we are recommended. Similarly, planting pattern. In case of northeastern hills, people are growing crop in this like this. So, th this is called along the slope. So, when you are growing crop along the slope, whenever there is too much rainfall, most of the water is going out. So, due to the water, soil erosion loss is very high. And whenever the soil erosion is very high or soil fertility is depletion and farmers pineapple size is decreasing. But in case of this condition, we have grow pineapple across the field 
along the contour we are growing cropping like this. So, whenever there will be rainfall, the rainfall will be hindered and the soil loss will be very less and if you see the pineapple size will be enhanced significantly. So, by this type of method also we can grow for some intercropping. You see this is one crop, we are one line we are growing pineapple, in the next line we are growing the soybean. So, it not only gives some extra pulse seed, but also the nitrogen fixation is there, they conserve the soil moisture and they also bind the soil, so reduce the soil erosion. So, ultimately they are producing a very good quality superior fruit and mulching is also needed. We generally time in case of pineapple, we are giving FYM at the rate 1 kg, 15 days before the planting and it attend flowering into 10 to 12 months. So, generally it take little bit time. So, in that time there are lots of weeds may also come in your field, but if you grow for intercropping with some legumes, they not only reduce the weed, but also give some extra produce production of the pulses and also restore the soil fertility and yield is very high, we can get up to 40 to 50 ton per hectare. So, now I am coming to the potato, potato is a very important crop. every in India, not only in India, in other parts of the world also potato is very much familiar. So, how to we can grow for potato and we also know potato is a very high yielding 24 ton, 25 ton, 30 ton. So, it also leads lots of nutrient especially potassium. So, how we can supply different type of manures and other things and grow potato organically and if we see there are different recommended variety, Kupri Jyoti, Kupri Megha, Kupri Giriraj, Kupri Giridhar is there. So, generally farmers are using the method is the nor or boon method, but our improved method is flat method and planting potato is rich. So, you can see how we are growing potato, we make the field, we are giving a small furrow and we are applying the lime. In acidic soil, potato also is a generally loves the acidic soil, but if we give little bit of lime, the soil pH whenever is goes little bit enhanced from 4 to 4.5 to 5 to 0.5. So, there are lots of nutrient availability and due to the nutrient availability growth of the potato will be better. And if there are lots of planting materials which whenever we are applying, the planting time always differs. For plains generally October to November, while for hill we are growing February, March, August in case of Meghalaya and seed rot is also very high 2 to 2.5 ton per hectare. So, when the seed rate is very high, we have to always conserve our own seed for growing the next crop. Otherwise, 20 quintal, 25 quintal seed if we have to purchase from the market we do not know also the quality and also we have to give too much price. So, different cropping system mode, whenever we grow this type of high value crops, maybe potato, if you see, we said grow along with some leguminous crops, maybe soybean, green gram and other. So, that there will be nitrogen fixation, soil fertility restoration is very much important in organic farming. We have to always try to promote different type of legumes. Also, you can grow some sir, other condition. So, if you see, what is the nutrient management, liming at the rate 40 kilo per hectare. We are also advocating the use of farmyard manure 15 ton per hectare and vermicompost 5 ton per hectare that is 3 is to 1. Similarly, we can also apply rock phosphate because in certain part where the acidic soil phosphorus is deficient, rock phosphate is advisable. Two spray, if you see panchagobbo that is 30 percent that is produced from I have already discussed in my earlier discussion how to produce the panchagobbo with different type of cow ghee, cow urine, cow dung and other products. Similarly, you can also produce vermi wash in the vermi composting tank by taking the water in outlet, this vermi wash, they are not only the growth stimulating, whenever you are mixing this panchagobbo, cow urine, vermi wash and spray, that also has some insect defense mechanism. So, they also insect repellent, so they will not allow to insect to come into near to the plant. So, that is why this type of traditional as well as our science based recommendations should be given for organic farming, especially for the potato and other crops. That if you see, we have grown different type of experiment we are using FOIM, we are using FOIM. So, in one of experimental stress on we have seen, whenever we are giving FOIM plus VC, most of the year along with the peeled mill, our yield is very high. So, that is why we are trying to recommend for potato when we are go for organic, 70 percent you apply FOIM, 75 percent and 25 percent we are recommending them for the allocation of this vermicompost and these are higher as compared to the FOIM alone or VC alone. So, by this process, a farmers can take different type of condition, how their yield is being enhanced and also how to use his precious organic sources and he, it is always better to promote or to a five farming or any entrepreneur to produce all these types of vermi compost or compost within his own farm. If you see the soil parameter, whenever we are giving, whenever we are applying, you see the soil pH, available nitrogen, SMBC and water holding capacity all are highest for the FOM plus VC. 
So, this means when we are applying the vermicompost along with three part of the FYM, it is not only enhancing the yield of the vegetables like potato, it also enhancing the soil quality may be soil pH and available nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium and other content in the soil. So, that is why this type of combination of vermicompost and compost or vermicompost or vermier manure is always advocated for organic farming. If you see the soil organic carbon, they are also enhanced and if you see how the organic nutrient management and biofertilizer. Nowadays, I am telling the FOM and VC. We have to also promote different type of biofertilizer. One biofertilizer is the azotobacter, so they are nitrogen fixer. Second is the PSB that is phosphorus solubilizing bacteria. So, if you see in one experiment we have given only 100 percent RDN through FOM and in the third experiment we have given FOM, but we have added two biofertilizer azotobacter and PSB and you see the yield has been enhanced from 17 to 21 ton per hectare and pool mean also 17 to 20 ton. So, in case of if we see the total net income is also enhanced over 170 dollar per hectare. So, these type of biofertilizer are always recommended for high value horticultural crops. They are very easy to apply, very cheap. So, our cost of cultivation is does not increase so much, but our profit will be maximized due to the higher gate yield. In certain parts where we are growing, I have already told you cannot grow different type of due to the lots of moisture, we should prove different type of grow of resistant sunken bed. And we have seen a potato is coming extremely well under this raised bed condition, even in that condition, if you had not make it bed, it is not possible to grow this type of vegetables. So, soil properties, how it is influenced after 7 years. In organic farming, always people tend initial 3 or 4 years, you may be get some less yield. But whenever they are after the conversion period your soil fertility is enhanced and your soil fertility has reached to a certain level, then you can manage the soil very well. It is not necessary every year after 5 or 6 years, you have to every time use 20 ton FOM per hectare. Even by 5 to 7 ton oil decomposed FOM will be sufficient. If you see under case of organic farming, our water holding capacity enhanced, soil pH is little bit always better, soil organic carbon is very high. You case for our initial 24 to 31, available nitrogen is good, available phosphorus and potassium also good. So, this means whenever we are growing for organic farming for a particular time of period not for a single or after certain period of time when our soil fertility is enhanced. So, we can maintain same level of yield as compared to the inorganic and also our soil fertility will be more. Most of the available nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, our bug density that will be high, our bug density will be reduced and soil microbial biomass carbon that is soil microbial activity is very much important for our soil health and that will be enhanced. So, earthy mass be needed, weed management needed, now the harvesting. We have to always take the harvesting in a care nature so that whenever we are producing this organic crop, they are should not be coincide with rain. If there is, you know, there will be a forecasting of the rain for 3 or 4 days after. So, it is always advisable to harvest before that rain, because if there is too much rain, immediately you cannot harvest and your quality will be reduced. So, after that you can grow different type of grading and after grading you can sell in the organic market and you will get definitely high, high premium price for your produce. Insect pests, there are different type of attack, one is the potato tuber moth, they not only attack in the field, but they also attack in the store. So, always you have to take care, we have to grow intercrops. We can also spraying microbial agent because we cannot use any insecticide, Bacillus thuringiensis and Gramulus virus, they are advocated. Also neem seed kernel extract or you can use neem cake 80 kilo per hectare. So, these are organic source of insecticide or fungicide where we have to promote it. Similarly, in storing also how you store, you can also do different type of this neem oil, white grab is also different and you can, we can use yellow sticker. This is one important method by this stick most of the you can also use different type of ferment trap and this ferment trap they have some hormones where all the insect or the male insect will come here and ultimately they will be kept here. So, you can easily kill them. So, in the absence of this male insect they cannot mate. When they cannot mate they cannot produce their offspring and they cannot attack further for the crops. So, this type of different type of technology we are promoting in organic farming. And there are lots of disease, late blight is very important disease not only the eastern India or western India throughout the India is one of the more severe disease. So, we have to only grow the late blight resistant varieties just like Kupri Jyoti, Kupri Mega and also organic pesticide neem oil, dairy some should be prayed 
and we have also harvest the crop after the harm so that we should not allow the harm to stay for a longer period. So, by this efficient technological process, even we can under organic farming, we can control this type of diseases to some extent and we can get a good yield for our profit maximization. Tomato is very important vegetable in every cooking, but also used as a salad in the burger, sandwich, everywhere eating. And for that is why this organic market always there is a too much demand for this organic tomato. And if you this, how beautifully in our organic leaf management, we can control our tomato without any too much yield loss. So, we have always applied the lime, it is very much important. We are advocating to the 5, 50 hundred kilo per hectare. Neem kag is always M4 15 ton per hectare. We can also use different type of biofertilizers like trichoderma and also use plant growth promoting rhizobacteria. We can also apply the pseudomonas and AMF that is arboscular mycorrhizal fungi. And whenever we are doing different type of integrated crop management or organic with FYM along with some vermicompost and then along with some different type of bio fertilizer, so we can create a very good crop. There will be lots of disease we are having. One of the major important disease is the bacterial wilt. So, that is always we are averting the crop rotation. You should not grow the tomato same crop in the same land years after year. And we have to use different type of biocontrol agent, trichoderma, pseudomonas, fluorescence. You can apply different type of neem oil if you see and also NPV that is nuclear polyhydrosis virus. They also has a tremendous role to control fruit borer, but in case of disease bacterial will we have to control in case of insect pest fruit borer is the control and always the panchagobbo wheat is produced by different five cow products. They are also help to decrease the incidence of this fruit borer along with lantana extract. This lantana is available everywhere is a weed also you can use vermi wash at 10 percent flowering stage and 10 days interval. So, like field salitation, removal or infestant. So, you have to take all care of cultural, biological, mechanical and other types of pest management in organic farming where you cannot apply insecticide or fungicide. So, these you see we have done different type of experiment and when we are using panchagobbo, 3 percent lantana listed vermicompost infested plant is very high and also the damage also is reduced lowest damage 10 percent. In case of control is 21 percent. So, it is not only advocated only neem oil, always invoke the other different type of organic pest management options. And if you see this is the harvesting and picking, by this different type of organic practices, we can get a very good road up to 25 to 30 ton per hectare even under the organic production system. So, it is not necessary to tell whenever we do, the organic farming cannot we go for the high value vegetables or high yielding varieties of potato, maybe tomato, spice and ginger. We can adopt organic farming this type of horticultural crops also, but we have not to depend only on the one source like organic manure or vermicompost. We have to take cognizance of the all the available different whatever the different type of principles of organic farming. It is may be crop rotation, it may be crop diversification, it may be intercropping of legumes or legumes should be incorporation as a cropping system, it should be the mulching, we have to use the bio fertilizer, we have to use the organic weed management practices, there is the bio pesticide and different other things. So, only when we can adopt this type of all these things and not only one crop basis, we are always try to promote this type of high value horticulture course in growing in the integrated organic farming system mode. So, that you can produce the different livestock additive, you can produce the manure and one input can be used as the export output of the other. So, that your total dependency on the market will be very much reduced only from this way you can grow. Similarly, we can also grow for carrot. Carrot is a very important crop and it is very high value cross 80 rupees, 100 rupees kilo. And by this efficient management of organic, we can also grow because it is a very good of vitamin A and qualithiamine and ribofabine carotenoids is there. So, we should you can also grow carrot under organic farming. And one is the beautiful thing is carrot, they are very less affected by insect pests as compared to the potato. So, in case of whenever go for organic farming, similar one crop is the French bean. They are grow organically coming excellently well and very less attack of insect pest. So, in organic farming we should to try to promote this type of crop, which are little bit resistant to insect and diseases and their nutrient requirement also little bit will be lower as compared to the other crops. Then we can manage our organic farm very well. And if you see nowadays organic farming is also being promoted in a vast area in the northeast condition by our government scheme, Mission Value Organic Chain Development. And they are mainly targeting the crop, these high value crops, ginger, turmeric, pineapple, potato, 
and other crops, maybe our Joha rice, black rice from the Manipur. So, and there are different outlets has been there and brand name is very much necessary and different brand name is coming under organic farming. For Sikkim, it is organic, organic in state more than 10 years, that is Sikkim organic, Orunachal organic is coming, Naga organic is coming, Tripura organic, O Megha mean Meghalaya organic, Mission organic Manipur, Mission organic Mizoram. So, this is coming. Our government is always promoting to enhance the production of the total this organic produce to enhance the livelihood of this farmers for particular northeastern region where there is already farmers are using organic by default or very less amount of inorganic fertilizer. And also we are promoting should organic promoted that for the niche crops, high value crops like fruits and vegetable wherever there is too much market. So by taking take different type of organic package of practices by scientifically amalgamation of our indigenous technical knowledge along with the, our modern organic science whatever is available with us, we can promote organic farming not only for the particular niche area, but we can also grow for organic for some high value crop especially for the horticultural crops not only for our domestic market, but also the international market so that our farmers get enough remunerative, we can exchange foreign and we can also give our place because in if you see the world trade in organic trade, our position is very low, our percentage is very low. So, there is a enough opportunity for our India condition to produce this type of different horticultural produce organically and sell in the international market. Thank you.